Stacy, could you come up here, please? Jeff. Jeff Stacy, front and center, please. <laughs> Jeff was our executive director here for 12 years. I'm my first team here as a minister, but he is also the foremost uh, authority on the history of this building and on the historical symbolism of everything that goes on here. We have a little bit of time, and I'm just going to have him give you a three-minute preview of the of the love window and what went into making that and the symbolism that it has. Uh, we spent all week uh, filming with Jeff about all sorts of different things that will be made available to you. So Jeff, if it's possible, could you uh, uh, give us a three-minute uh, definition? Good morning. This is an unexpected pleasure. Good morning. But we had fun this week. Duke uh, generously asked me to um, commit some of my passionate love for this place. And I remember years ago, maybe you don't remember this since you were talking about relationships, but Duke commenting one, uh, one time during a service, well, there's one thing about Jeff. He loves this temple more than he loves me. <laughs> and at the... Uh, the time it hurt a little bit, amusing, but to be compared to loving stones and bricks more than a human being was a little disconcerting, but I took it in context and how it was intended. But I bring that up because when you go away for, from home for a number of years, you come back. And it is a joy. And part of my joy and love for this building is these are not truly just things. They are people that went before us on the path and left in artistry a trace of what we all hold dear. Now I've only got like 90 seconds. <laughs> the chancel window is a real treasure of this church. The Woman's Auxiliary of Unity Temple Commission, the well-known architectural muralist Daniel McMorris, who had so much to do with the decoration of our famous Liberty Memorial, the ceilings of the Nelson Art Gallery. And this was created when he worked from his studio in Carnegie Hall in New York City. The symbolism designed by Reverend Louis E. Meyer, the minister of this congregation for 26 years, during which time the temple was built, completed, and cleared of all construction debt under his leadership. How can we begin to comprehend? Unity has always maintained a focus upon love but what our co-founder Charles Fillmore called a love that is not mere human affection. But is to be a spiritual power that connects us one to another. An inner Christ that can perceive the Christ of another. We look at the obvious book placed here with the word love written upon it. But sometimes our spiritual traditions of whatever kind can become forms that are fixed and hardened. You know, we're occasionally tempted to say there's only one way to think in our spiritual institutions. And this eternal flame this presence of what Charles Fillmore called the I am, the higher consciousness, the divine truth that showers its spiritual light upon us. And as it falls upon those religious traditions symbolized by the open book, the sacred scriptures, it reveals their secret. That love, as Charles Fillmore described it, is the mission of our earth, 
our whole purpose of being. A similar teacher, contemporary of Charles Fillmore, working in Europe, Dr. Riddle Steiner, claimed that love is only possible as we walk this earth as a human being. Although there are great spiritual powers beyond, our extraordinary gift as human beings is the capacity to reveal love in this world through our relationships one to another and through our compassionate deeds. From Unity's first place of worship of 1906 in downtown Kansas City on Tracy Avenue, placed upon the front wall was a simple word in gold leaf, love. It was repeated many times as unity developed. And this was the gift here in Unity Temple, expressed in artistry, that whatever we do in our spiritual practices in this community, through our artistic performances, the inspired speakers who pass through these doors, we can, in the silence, remember that love as compassion and unity is the focus of our lives, our relationships one to another, and the true meaning and blessing of being a part of a family, a community, such as this one which now that I live far, far, far away, actually in the land of Oz, where the Wizard of Oz stories were written, not in Kansas, but in Syracuse, New York, I long for this place. And it is my prayer for you that however you are involved here at the temple, however often you focus upon this love window, whatever your path may be. Follow those words of scripture. Love one another. Be present to one another. <coughs> Honor one another. And know that you're not alone. There are people that have gone before us that have left this treasure, this home, in, we, in which we might celebrate life. Remember them. Remember those who live far away. And to look, who look fondly to the temple as a place, a haven of rest and inspiration. We are one. One in this power of love. So I invite you to remember the gifts that have graced this temple through the years. But let us not harden them into simply objects and a building of brick and stone. <laughs> but to always remember the love that was behind every stone, every bit of artistry, every note of music and every word of truth declared. That was more than three minutes. But as Duke knows, my motto, as I told a tour once in the Heritage Room, someone waved and said, I think that's a little too much information.